so in previous video we saw that n1 is equal to 0 was a stable fixed point and n2 to be equal to b minus square root r over a was unstable fixed point and n3 which was p plus square root of r over a was a stable fixed point now if we want to draw the so called phase line then the phase line should look like this let's say this is my n1 which is stable then i have something n2 this fell over here which is unstable and then i have n3 which is stable so for the case of uh, stable my flow should look this way in other words n3 is attractor and n2 is repeller or unstable or n3 is sink and n2 is source and n1 is also sink so so keeping this in head uh, we can plot qualitative sketch and uh, let's let's draw the axis let's say this is my n of t and let's say this is time axis then indeed our uh, we have our n1 n2 this is our n1 and this should be our n2 and then we have n3 so this value should be minus b over square root r over a and this value should be p plus square root r over a recall when we were drawing this you know n prime and n axis then this n was kind of x axis now because we are plotting n and t so this axis has become y axis for us now uh, because this is you know repeller n to r it is you know kind of uh, what what should i say unstable so this is my first you know fixed point this is second fixed point and this is the third fixed point so if any trajectory between n1 and n2 is starting then it will move towards n1 because it's the attractor if let's say if some trajectory is, is if some initial data is taken over here then this will this will move to this n1 in other words the population will get extinct, extinct or it will be zero in long term if there is any data if you are taking any trajectory that is over here it will again be moving towards this because this is a tractor if something is taken over here then it might go some at some extent to this but ultimately uh, it will be you know repelled by this n2 and as time goes to infinity the trajectory will move towards zero but what happens if we are taking the the initial condition between n2 and n3 between n2 and n3 we can realize that n3 is our attractor because it's stable and n2 is our repeller it's unstable so if any trajectory is starting over here it will ultimately or eventually be attracted towards n3 if any trajectory is starting over here then it will go towards n3 if there is any other trajectory that will also move towards n3 maybe if there are bundle of trajectories if you are taking initial data in between n2 and n3 or in other words if n of 0 or the initial population is between these two minus b r over a and b plus r over a then for this initial data if you solve the dynamical system uh, the differential equation then the solution would uh, in long term be converging to n3 in other words in long term the population will be equal to b plus square root of r over a what if we are taking initial data uh, you know greater than this n3 value or above this n3 
then because again if you are taking any data over here then n3 is the attractor so if you are taking initial data over here close to this n3 then it will be attracted by n3 uh, let me put it in some other way like this so if there is any other that might again be you know ultimately be attracted towards n3 so the meta conclusion is if you are taking initial data between n2 and n1 then it will be uh, you know making your population zero in long term and if you are taking initial data between n2 and n3 then the population will you know be equal to a long term b plus square root r over 3 and other word n3 if you are taking uh, your initial data or initially if the population you know is uh, greater than n3 then in long term it will be you know equal to n3 so that's the that's how the qualitative qualitative sketch of solutions of this you know le effect would look like on the other hand if we compare this le effect with the so-called comparison with logistic growth model then our model looked like n dot was equal to r n times 1 minus n over k and for this case we have already seen that if we plot this you know on n dot versus n then this is a cup down parabola which looks, which looks like this this is the value of k this is k value and uh, this was the stable fixed point and zero was unstable fixed point so phase line will become you know something like this n equal to you know this is n equal to zero was one fixed point and then this was unstable and this is n equal to and one and two equal to k was these other figure and this was the attractor or the stable and this is unstable so in this case if we plot this you know the trajectories then this was my k and uh, in this case you know if we are taking any data this is n2 this is n1 if you are taking any data between n1 and n2 it will be attracted it will be attracted towards n2 like this for example if there is any other trajectory that is starting close to n2 will be attracted towards n2 from both sides so so that's how the you know logistic regression look like but if we compare then an Ali effect we have three fixed points n1 n2 n3 on the other end for logistic we have just two n1 and n2 so this n2 is important over here because because in this case we say that any you know no matter wherever data you are taking your trajectories will ultimately be approaching to n2 equal to k but for this case this is not the case it says that if you are taking initial data between n0 is n1 and n2 then your trajectories will move to 0 n1 if you are taking n2 between n2 and n3 then your trajectories will move towards n3 so this you know logistic model do, does not account for the matting difficulties uh, so it, it you know does not account for the matting difficulties when as n is small in other words if population is small 
then uh, there is a mating difficulty in other words reproduction process has to slow down and as a result the population will get to zero for the case when we were discussing about the Ali effect so that was all about Ali effect and logistic regression